barbecue. I'm Ryan. That's Evan. He's the cook. Aiden's back there. Um, okay, so today, I had another video we, we were going to release. Everybody told me it was a crazy idea, so we're going to do a tri-tip because, you know, meat, smoked, grilled, stuff like that. a little bit more familiar, plus right. it's uh, shell approved. She wanted a tri-tip. It's like steak and brisket got together and made tri-tip. Okay, so first thing with the cook, set up the grill. What we have is B&B lump charcoal, pecan chunks inside of it, chimney starter going, light. Real simple. A couple things with tri-tip. Tri-tip is actually three pieces of muscle, which makes cutting them problematic. Easy. New camera setup, hopefully you can see all this. So what, what you're looking at with whiskey, no, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I'm just going to go ahead and pour because so, there's a reason why we're drinking and cooking at the same time. Right. Because we have a whiskey and barbecue channel. Imagine that. Um, whenever you're cutting tri-tip, you want to, with all kind of meats, you want to look at them before you start cooking so you can see kind of where the grain is going in the meat. Here, what you're looking at is you can see how the grain runs this way through this portion of the meat, mm -hmm. but then it turns and it runs this way for the long portion of the meat. Interesting. Kind of make a mental note of it. I've seen some people take pictures of it so they can remember that kind of thing. And then with this one, you got this, and well, on the other side, it's that. Yeah, this one's just upside down. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's the same kind of thing. So whenever we get into cutting this, I'm going to show you how to cut it down, make it nice and tender. So, seasonings. We have a fun little array of seasonings today. Wipe my hand off. I feel like there's a little bit of an issue when we've only opened this bottle twice and there's only that much left in it. And technically today is twice. The second time. Yes. Yes. All right. So All right. starting off, three, two, one, salt, pepper, garlic. So three tablespoons of pepper, coarse grind. Uh -huh. Three tablespoons kosher salt. Excuse uh -huh. me, two tablespoons kosher salt. One tablespoon granulated garlic. One tablespoon smoked paprika. that oh my word so you're a coffee nerd right a little bit do you have ground you have espresso ground at your house I don't have a grinder to make espresso but I do have espresso beans do you have espresso ground no yeah you do guess where I got this from you got that from my house no I could open a k-cup I don't have a k-cup oh you don't because you, you drink a lot of coffee I, I drink coffee I don't drink cake <laughs> <laughs> So if you don't have espresso ground coffee or if you have a kind of coffee that you really like, cut open the K-cup, pour the coffee in. It's a, What I found is it's a really super fine grind because of how fast it has to percolate. So if you have a magic bullet, you can use your flat bait blade and get a really fine grind on your coffee, which will be a better espresso. The more fine you can get it, the slower the water has to or can go up through it and give you a much more motor oil coffee if you oh. will. I know motor oil oh that's lovely right it's like I know what I'm doing so it's just so in one K cup that would be one tape two tablespoons it's of about two tablespoons of espresso yeah okay so right. two tablespoons of espresso grind basically what you're gonna do is whatever you use for salt kind of match that with your uh, espresso we're given we're, we're putting espresso on this yes and then we're feeding our kids yes that's a great idea Yes. Just give toddlers espresso. They're not going to eat that much anyway. <laughs> and it's not that much. <laughs> Take a lot for mine. They're my kids. Okay, so binder. Worcestershire. That. That sauce. He came over one day and he said, do you have Worcestershire or soy? So I pulled both of them out because the answer was yes. And he proceeded to show me how the binder works with the Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. And then I just did the soy on top of that, so. It works. It works. Ever since then, I've been using both of them, whereas he says you only need to use one. Let's trust what he says. He hasn't been wrong as of yet. You can do both, it's mm -hmm. fine. That's All right. Pretty, pretty thing. Now, sprinkle on. So remember, try tip. It's not a brisket, but it's still a good chunk of meat. Mm -hmm. And it's not a steak, but it's like the two got together and had a baby. Yes. 
So grill's coming up to temperature. We're gonna let it get up to about 225, 250. And we're gonna we're gonna sort of reverse sear this, but not really fully reverse sear. Yeah, so not as low as a reverse sear where you would be around the 175 mm -hmm. mark. And a right about where brisket would be, 225, mm -hmm. 250. Bigger cut of meat, you can take it. Okay. The thing to be careful of whenever you're using coffee for a, uh, seasoning while you're cooking is it can burn relatively easily. Is that right? Yep. So it's just like using fresh herbs and those kind of things whenever you're cooking. If you do a high heat sear, you have a you run a chance of burning the burning them to where they don't taste that good. Okay. Pits of two fifty. Is that right? Yep. <laughs> Shocking. So take your tri-tips, we're gonna put them on. No real rhyme or reason to the arrangement, you just want the fatter piece kind of toward the heat source. Huh. Same way when you're cooking a brisket. Enjoy that sound, guy. So now we're gonna let that do its thing. Yep. And for the next two, three hours, we're gonna drink. <laughs> like this new arrangement already. So it'll probably, this will probably actually only take about an hour and a half, two hours to get done. We're gonna take it to about 130 internal. Mm -hmm. Take it right to medium rare, mm -hmm. pull it off, rest, sear, drink. Well, drink, pull it off, drink, drink, rest, yes, drink. All right, sear. I guess we'll see you back in a little bit. Hi, we're back. So, these have been going for an hour and a half, hour and 45. Yeah, how's your temperature doing? Crazy. Yeah? Yep. It was running 190. It was running about 390. Hmm. That's the same. So, both these are right at 125. Oh, those look nice. Look yep. at those. See how they're starting to open up? Oh my Everything word. else. So, park is nice and on there. Yep. See, look how flexible it is. See, whenever you're reverse searing or something and you want to do, and you know you have it to the right tenderness, if you can take it and fold it in half. And it's limber. Yeah, real flexible. It's like brisket that's wiggly jiggly. They're not there yet. So what we're gonna do, take the grill grate off. We're gonna put everything toward the center and get a bunch of coals going. We're gonna have the bed kind of spread out where we can sear those off really hard. We're gonna sear them. We'll let the grill go for about 15 minutes to get up to temperature. Yeah. All the degrees? Yeah, lots yeah. of degrees. Yeah. We're gonna get the grill set up. We'll see y'all back in about 15 minutes. This is the sound we hear every dinner time. Especially on Sundays. Sundays, yeah. Okay, so now we have the grill to hot a few higher degrees than what yes. it was. You see, if you can see over here, see all the gold, all, all the gold, all the red, all the hot, all the degrees. What you're looking for. So we're gonna take our tri-tip, mm -hmm. which has been resting. That's just been resting. So what you kind of want it to do is you want the temperature to stabilize, and right as it starts to fall, that's when you want to sear it because you don't want to cook the internals anymore. It's at the temperature that you want. Mm. So you just want to hit the outside to get a nice crunchy sear on it. Okay. This, we're not doing in the oil and everything, or the butter and everything this time because of the coffee and everything else. Remember what I said earlier, mm -hmm. I got to be careful with coffee. Yeah, don't want to burn it. Um, right, so I don't want the big whoosh flame kind of thing that we normally do. I just want a high heat to sear it, but not actually. Lo you want to lock in the juices right. without over roasting right. coffee. Right, I don't want to flamey flamey. Okay. So this time you're doing fat on the outside? Or is fat on the bottom? It's just over and it'll get turned in a couple minutes. And it doesn't matter where fat is. No, because okay. it's it's all hot. So I just have to. You know, we're not wasteful here. We've got to. I lost my top. I heard my top. Got to take care of stuff here. Mmm. Oh, that's good. There's like a lot of kids, but they're all over there. Mm. Mm. Would you stop? No. <laughs> you can't make me. You're not my real dad. <laughs> so. See how this is kind of breaking apart? I say breaking apart. How the 
What do, what do you call it, the flaky setting on the grill? Yes, I was about to, to inquire if that is the fajita setting that we do. That's the fajita yeah. setting, but you gotta flaky. show it to the camera. I did, yeah. it's there. And there, and there, and meet with Christ, sorry. So, these have been cooking for about three hours. We're going to let them rest for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna cut them up and we're gonna try them. I'm gonna tell my wife we're gonna eat in 30 minutes. Beans! I got potatoes to do. Oh, I'm gonna turn those in a second. All right, I, I gotta go do stuff. Yeah. Hi, we're back again right. with round two of like this. So, what? It's important, you were telling us. About the muscle fibers in yes. the way how they go. Uh huh. That's where we're getting And to. that's called what? Muscle fibers. Or direction. Or tri-tip. Grain. 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 Good job. So with tri-tip, remember, the grain goes this way. And then once you get to about this large crease, it turns this way. So what I normally do is I break it in half there. <gasps> Aiden, can you see all of it? Cool. Aiden says y'all can see everything. If you can't see it, blame him. Works for us. So for the section that it's running like this, I normally just kind of parse it out and set it to the side. Look this one, at that. I turn 90 degrees and we just start slicing thin. So you have a little bias in your cut on this one or not L so much? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Yeah, because you know, we're look, feeding a lot of people. Look at that. Not the, t not, not the knife, obviously, but the nicely done there. So whenever you cut it, if you don't think it's tender, nice and pull apart tender. Oh my gosh. Can we? Hey, Aiden, mm. say ah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that goes really good. I know. You did good. Excellent cook, Evan. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, look, it's hey, like a lot of it's kids. Hey, kids. All right, the best. The best whiskey is your favorite. I was getting there. I had to eat my meat. The best whiskey is your favorite. The best barbecue is the way that you like it. Remember to share both. Come on, come on, come on. Cheers. Cheers. I'm working. Remember y'all burn and learn.